Well, Baldwin Swamp is sitting in the middle of the city. Um, it's we get overseas visitors that get shocked. They can come here. It's totally surrounded by a town, a city, uh, with this beautiful natural area. Uh, I've had people from South Africa shocked that they can come here, walk around for free. Uh, it, it is that beautiful a place. It is that big a surprise to find it sitting in the middle of the city. The amount of wildlife you get here uh, is, is just amazing. And to get that, that amount of wildlife, you've got to have all the different foods that they enjoy. You've got to have water that, that, that they can drink. Look, you, you've got certain trees here that provide food for caterpillars and butterflies, which are then eaten by cuckoos and other birds. You've got different grasses that are eaten, uh, the grass seeds eaten by different birds. You've got your, your rats, your mice that are eaten by raptors. They can nest here, there's thick thick pockets of vegetation around where the birds can nest, uh, relatively free from, uh, from predators. And look, to be able to just come here and walk through to enjoy all the birds is just amazing. It's, it is. I, I don't think people realise just what, what a jewel in the crown that Baldwin Swamp is, and, and it can certainly be better, um, but it's great now. Uh, what it provides is just numerous different types of habitat and being so close to the centre of Bundy, it, it's also the lungs of Bundy. But just, we've got rainforest here, we've got uh, grasslands here, we've got eucalypt forest, dry sclerophyll. Uh, it's just a wonderful place and uh, you know, it's not inconceivable to get a hundred different species here in a, in a day if you, if you work fairly hard, which is incredible. Grasslands have an amazingly important role to play and uh, Birds like just walking in here, I, I heard uh, groups of white-browed scrub wrens. Uh, things like uh, finches, obviously they eat the grass seeds. Uh, Golden-headed cysticlers, tiny grass birds. You also have largely um, unflighted type birds like crakes and rails that, that need that cover. And as soon as that cover's gone, those birds are gone. They're gone the minute that habitat's destroyed. There are spotted crakes here, and I'm, I'm, my understanding is that others have uh, seen and heard uh, Lewin's rail in here, and his buff banded rail. So they are here, and without that habitat, they, they wouldn't be here. But you know, as a birder, we love our crakes and rails. The grass, the grass seed eating birds, is a lot of our finches that will eat seed straight off the uh, stems. And then on top of that, we've got other finches that will eat seed on the ground. All our doves and pigeons. They eat seed that's on the ground. They've got to wait till this ripens and the seed falls. Now if that gets mowed off and there's no seed, we're going to lose those types of birds. Yeah, a lot of the grassland is getting mowed back. Um, it seems to, seems to be as soon as it just about gets to seeding height, a lot of it is mowed right back to, to the banks, uh, back into the trees and they're taking a lot of this away from the birds, from the finches, from the quails, doves, pigeons. Uh, it, it needs to be, people have a walking track, that's fine, bike track, but leave, leave the grass behind. We, we need the grass, the birds need the grass. Well, eventually we're going to lose the finches, um, we're going to lose the pigeons, the doves, the quails. Uh, we have other seed eaters here, we're going to lose those. Uh, you start to lose the smaller birds, you'll end up losing the raptors. There won't be as much food for raptors. They'll go elsewhere to look for food. Um, you're taking away nesting material from the larger birds. So the bird population will crash. It will be similar to when we had the floods in 2013 and there was nothing here for the birds, so we had no birds. Uh, now that was caused by water damage, but if the council takes all that grass away, the same as the flood did, the same thing will happen, but it'll be permanent. The birds just won't come back. I suppose if I could pull out my, uh, my utopic hat, I'd love um, the different people that are maintaining our areas to simply mow uh, a path uh, that's wide enough uh, for uh, people to walk. And then perhaps where there's vehicles, you know, just that maybe three metres wide enough for vehicles to get through. The idea of mowing areas excessively 
is costly and counterproductive. Um, and another thing I've noticed, which I just cannot get my head around, is when the paths are mowed, often it appears that uh, secondary people come along and, uh, and then use uh, uh, Roundup or similar products to then uh, burn, burn off or kill the, the edge of that. And, and I think what that does from just being out here regularly is it means those paths get wider and wider. And uh, as well, that dead grass hasn't got the same environmental value as, as, um, as live grass. And it also has the risk of being, um, you know, the opportunity for fire bugs to drop a match in it. So lush grass is not gonna, is rarely ever gonna be a fire risk. Look, I, I can understand using uh, Roundup or similar around culverts and drains, perhaps even uh, markers like, um, uh, you know, safety markers, signs, that sort of thing. That, that's clearly just sense, common sense. But everywhere else, leave the long grass. And, and I'll, I'll put my, my uh, herpetologist hat on. And, and it's interesting that cane toads, really, the, the, the awful introduced pest that is the cane toad, they actually like those grassed areas where it's all slashed down and they can just go in and out of the, 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 um, the, 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 the wet areas. Whereas our native frogs uh, hop and uh, they, um, they, they actually prefer the reeds and the long grasses. So we're actually encouraging cane toads as well by, by mowing down all those reeds and I don't think that's a good thing. Uh, everybody that, that loves the birds, everybody that loves the, the reptiles, the insects, all the fauna that's in here. Get in touch with your area councillor, get in touch with the mayor. Just tell them how you feel, tell them what we need. Leave the grass alone. Please leave the grass alone.